Okay, I promised a new neurobiology video, and um, I think this is a pretty good um, question to get, start going over. So, one of the sensory modalities of the sense of taste is the ability to detect saltiness. Now, we all know this in our everyday life. We can detect saltiness. We know when something has a lot of salt in it, the soup or whatever. And we detect this saltiness when we have elevated levels of KCl or NaCl. So, sodium chloride or potassium chloride dissolved in solution on the tongue. So it's dissolved in solution on the tongue. So what they want you to do in this question is design a transducer that would respond to a change with a change in membrane potential. So essentially what they want to do is they want to say how could I uh, you know have an action potential occur based on this sensation of saltiness. How can these ions you know change the membrane potential to eventually produce an action potential which is you know um, processed by the brain to tell me I'm detecting saltiness or I'm tasting uh, some salty uh, solution so let's go into to it and, and I kind of prepared the question already but I mean prepared the answer already rather but I will draw a picture and kind of show you what I'm talking about so basically, you might already be thinking about this. You're thinking about, let's say, sodium chloride. We're thinking about sodium chloride. We're thinking about dissolved in solution on the tongue. Now, that makes sense. I mean, you know, perfect sense. It's going to dissolve. You're going to have Na plus and Cl minus, and you're going to have the ions. And so the first thing that should come to mind, and the first thing that comes to, my, to mind for me, is ion channel. Okay, and we've been talking about ion channels quite a bit in these neurobiology videos. So ion channels play an extremely important role. And it's quite obvious that an ion channel would be a good choice here. Now the question is, how do I use an ion channel to create some sort of action potential, to have some sort of change in membrane potential? Okay, so what I said was the receptors for NaCl and KCl must be able to detect the concentration of dissolved ions. So you have to have a way to detect the concentration of dissolved ions. And the simplest way to do this is to design the transducer um, for these ions by having an ion channel. So essentially the simplest way to design the transducer is to have an ion channel. Okay, and the ions are detected by the increase in the concentration leading to a change in membrane potential due to the separation of charge. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here is we're trying to just show that the influx of these ions one way or the other, okay, the influx of these ions is going to change the membrane potential. All right, and it makes perfect sense. The ions are charged, okay? They have charges, so you're going to get some sort of change in membrane potential here. So if I were drawing this, I would I would just I really wouldn't go too crazy here. I would probably just draw something like this. I would have some sort of lane here, and then I would have some sort of channel here, okay? So kind of here's this is going to be my channel essentially. And you know, maybe you have another one on this side, right? So basically what I want here is I want a channel. So here's my channel, nothing fancy, just a simple channel, okay? So here you go, here's a channel. Now, of course, each one of these channels is selective, okay? Remember, ion channels are selective, so that's an important thing. These ion channels are selective, so one of them is going to be for, I'm going to make for K+, okay, for potassium. So potassium is going to go into this channel here, okay? It's going to enter through that channel. And down here is going to be sodium, so Na+. And that's going to enter through this channel right here, okay? So I have K plus entering through this channel, Na plus entering through this channel. And each of those channels is a um, selective channel. It selects for a specific ion, in this case K plus and Na plus. All right? So the, that's, going, that's going to be going on there. And the other thing I'm going to have here is that this channel is going to be connected to, you know, some sort of um, synapse here. We're going to have a synapse here. And, you know, this is going to result in, um, this is going to result in the release of neurotransmitters. And it's going to be a positive release, so it's going to increase the activity of this and the increase in activity of, of this is going to eventually be sent to the brain to be processed okay so that information will then be sent to the brain processed as salty so that's essentially the drawing I would come up with I mean it's really nothing fancy but my explanation for it and the way I would explain it on say an exam is I would say that the dissolved ions of the salty of the salt 
rather, initiate sensory transduction by specific ion channels. Okay, so remember I said each ion channel specific, one for K+, plus, one for Na+. Plus. Okay, and that's going to initiate sensory transduction. Now, the change in potential is the result of the inward flux of Na+, plus or K+, plus ions leading to the depolarization, leading to the depolarization of the cell. Okay, so that influx of positive charge. Now that makes perfect sense because if you go back to the other videos I made about the action potential and I talked about the ionic changes that are going on, remember Na plus was one of the ions that is that is involved in the um that is involved in the depolarization phase, okay, when I drew the graph. Now that's exactly what's going on here. Okay, Na plus again is being is influxing through this channel, moving through this channel, and it's leading to depolarization of the cell. And this change in membrane potential also causes maybe voltage gated um, Ca2 plus or calcium channels. So maybe over here, I have some calcium over here, you know, Ca2 plus, I have some calcium, and I have another channel here. So once a certain change in membrane potential occurs here, so we have a change in membrane potential, now Ca2 plus is going to start entering, so calcium is going to also start entering through a separate channel of course, and that's going to further depolarize the cell. Okay, so by opening the calcium, the voltage sensitive ion channels, calcium channels, you're going to further depolarize the cell. Okay, and that's going to cause the release of the neurotransmitters, and that's going to happen down here. And that's where you're going to have I should get this on um, camera here. So I have another calcium ion channel here, and that's going to start, you know, an influx of calcium that's going to be based on the on the change in membrane potential. So the K plus and Na plus, that's going to change the membrane potential to a degree. Okay, it's going to depolarize it, and then that sent that's going to be sensed by this voltage sensitive calcium channel. Voltage sensitive calcium channel is going to open. Ca2 plus is going to move in. It's going to further depolarize the cell because it's also positively charged. It's more positive. It has a plus two instead of a plus one charge. Um, and what that's eventually going to do is result in the release of neurotransmitters. Okay, That's essentially what, the, what what's going to happen here. And I actually should show this the other way. This should be a circle and this should be. Okay, So this should be the um, postsynaptic. And of course it's going to be positive and it's going to be increasing. But the, the point being essentially is that the release of neurotransmitters from the synaptic vesicle okay, is eventually um, going to be processed by the brain as a sensation of saltiness. So that's what's going to happen here. And you know I'm really unhappy with what I did here. So I'm going to try and draw it again. So anyway, so you have this here and you know here's your synaptic vesicle alright and that's releasing some neurotransmitter and there's sensors over here okay for that neurotransmitter on the postsynaptic membrane alright so that's essentially what's happening it's a good question it's a thought question so hopefully this is helpful